almost, you know, you have to look for new world metaphor. It's Amazonian. We're at the foot of this gigantic series of lakes, and it's fresh water. It's the reason we became a bustling and important city in the early part of the American story, and perhaps one of the reasons we'll become an important city again in the 21st century. One of the great things that Lake Erie gives us is this oceanic view over 200 miles of water to the west. It's just spectacular to sit out there and watch the sunset over the water, and that's something no one else in the eastern U.S. has because all our other cities, Boston, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, they don't have sunsets over the water. We do. The city of Buffalo is surrounded by water. We have Lake Erie to our west, Niagara Falls to the north, and Buffalo River meandering to the south. The settlement patterns in our community came up from the water. Well, Buffalo is one of the few cities that has a truly Baroque street system. In 1804, Joseph Ellicott came to town. Joseph Ellicott was the brother of Andrew Ellicott, who was on Pierre L'Enfant's team to design Washington, D.C. And a lot of elements of the plan of Washington, D.C. are visible in Buffalo, a grid overlaid by a radial system of streets. The radial and grid street system gave us an incredibly elegant framework for developing our city. One of the really terrific things about radials is the way they shape the view. So when you're coming down Court Street from a Lafayette Square, you have what Ada Louise Hostable called the greatest urban vista in America. perhaps the greatest landscape architect America has produced, designer of Central Park. The father of landscape architecture. Came to Buffalo with an invitation to put a park in the city. Decided instead that the real thing to do is put the city in a park system. It was the first best design park system in America. That park and parkway system was built on the armature of the elegant radial street system. There's no main gate. There's, you come in from any direction. You can move through the parkways to other parks and have very different experiences in each one. Frederick Law Olmsted called Buffalo the best planned city in America, if not the world. The thing that makes that marginally credible is that he said it before he offered his park system. So, it was the best planned city in America before the park and parkway system, and he added value to that best plan. The parks, of course, are beautiful in and of themselves, but sometimes we forget how significant the parkways were and how they framed the city and how they reflect Olmsted's vision of a democratic city, an egalitarian approach where, you know, Anyone and everyone in Buffalo felt like they were royalty by virtue of being on those parkways. To those of us who live along some of these streets or who traverse them regularly, we get the idea today uh, of what Ellicott and Olmsted wanted you to feel. You're, you're an individual, but when you cross these great civic works, you're part of a much larger thing. You're part of a larger society. You're part of something that can only happen with the collective will, effort, aspirations of your fellow citizens. And to ride a bike, to walk your dog along Chapin Parkway is just tremendously uplifting. And in Buffalo, we get that by walking the dog. The radials and the water and the park system in the best planned city in America set the table for the best architecture in America. Buffalo, of course, has buildings by what are today seen as the three greatest American architects, Frank Lloyd Wright, H.H. H. Richardson, and Louis Sullivan. The grid 
overlaid with the radial streets provides you with these fantastic building sites that really attract great architects to do their best work. And that is all integrated within incredible, walkable, compact neighborhoods. So when you go down the streets of Buffalo, you're going to see, yeah, holy cow, there's a house by Frank Floyd Wright, my gosh, but you're going to see lining the streets really wonderful and sometimes touching examples of craftsmanship. Buffalo, like, like so many cities, uh, made some tremendous mistakes starting around 1950. If we didn't actually have a highway built by Robert Moses through a city, we were inspired by a highway built by Robert Moses through a city. We brought Skajakwood Expressway directly through an Olmsted Park, Delaware Park. We rammed the Kensington Expressway down one of Olmsted's parkways, displacing it entirely, Humboldt Parkway. It's fascinating. There were photographs of these giant elm trees being sawed down, and the caption on the pictures wasn't tragedy on Humboldt Parkway, it was hallelujah, progress coming. They said, hey, this is progress. How is it progress? How do you just cut right through a neighborhood? And one side gets destroyed because of it, and the other side barely holds on. You, it'll make you cry. You say, well, what the world happened? Every public record shows us that there were public votes, there was public hearings, where people said, don't do this. This is going to really destroy neighborhoods. And they did it anyway. Is, is there the mistake of all mistakes, the mother of all mistakes? We built the expressway system that surrounds our city on the water. The 190 and the Skyway just cut Buffalo off from its waterfront. So those are huge mistakes. We're still suffering from those mistakes. We may have yet an opportunity to undo them. That's our task for the next 50 years. Little by little, I've seen someone get the courage to say, let's fix it. The Larkin District is one of the true Rust Belt success stories. In the past 10 years, a group of imaginative investors have managed to take a district which was basically abandoned 10 years ago and made it one of the most exciting and lively places in the city today. This area was established actually in 1827 as Buffalo's first manufacturing district known as the Hydraulics. And it's just a, a great historic district that was in tremendous disrepair. So if you wandered around here 10 years ago, you would have seen primarily boarded up and abandoned buildings. We now have as many employees in the district as Larkin had in its heyday, so we've come full circle that way, which is great. We thought we'd start out with just having um, some music after work, and people really came out. So then the idea came about really from our son of why don't we invite the food trucks down. The crowds have been around 2,000 people. This is a component of the Renaissance of Buffalo, and I think people have really enjoyed being part of that. In Buffalo, we have an opportunity to rebuild the neighborhoods that we still have. They're a proven alternative to sprawl. We're turning the page with a new zoning code to begin the process of rebuilding our walkable urban neighborhoods. There is tremendous incremental progress, and hopefully that will create a better argument to make some of the big moves, like highway removal, like restoring our streetcar system, fully restoring our Olmsted parks and parkways. 80% of what he brought to us is still here. What if, what if we went back to that? and said, we're gonna restore this place. It's a very powerful movement that's happening right now. I'm excited to be a part of it because you can see the changes happening every day. You know, new projects on the waterfront, old buildings being saved. We are now starting to see a reawakening and a reconnection to our waterways that made this region great. There's nothing better than Canal Side. I love to bring my kids there to run around, to eat, to play in the sand area. I think that the crowning achievement so far in the past 10 years of downtown's revitalization has to be the Lafayette Hotel. It's an amazing space, uh, was a wreck. And we restored it to its original grandeur. 100% of the apartments were rented the day we opened. It's funny because I see some of the bankers that thought I was crazy seven or eight years ago, and today they're calling me for my business. The mayor has made a commitment to add 10 miles of bicycle lanes per year. We're the first city in the state to pass a complete streets policy, and our flat topography, our, our well-connected streets, is really gonna go a long way to making this one of the best bicycling cities in the country. Elmwood Village was a wreck in the 1970s, and only 30 years later, it was rated as one of the top 10 best neighborhoods in the country by the American Planning Association. We've got walkable streets, bikeable streets, compact neighborhoods, short blocks. I mean, these are all the ingredients for making a successful place happen in the 21st century. For us, it's merely a matter of restoring them. I think we're beyond this idea of people wanting to leave and find something better in a different city. 
I think people are putting in stakes and putting in roots here in Buffalo. I think the attitude of, of our generation is optimism and hope. Buffalo is a city that appeals to a person who wants to make change. You can be an active participant in what's happening. You can take your ideas and implement them. It's always been a really friendly city. People who are new to Buffalo find that they can get very involved very quickly and it's a welcoming place to new ideas. I think we're going to become one of the great cities in the nation again and what we offer people I think is the opportunity to take part in that revitalization story. The city of Buffalo is in transition. To say it's coming back is to suggest it's going back to what it was. It's becoming something new. So come see it emerging. Help feed our enthusiasm and give us courage.